In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why you most likely have a job that is completely BS. Because there is a book that actually covered this in detail and it mentions there's five types of jobs where, there's basically five types of jobs and all of them are type of BS jobs, like pointless jobs. And I'm sure if you listen to this video, analyze it and compare it to your job, you'll realize one of your jobs or <laughs> your job meets one of these categories that says it is a pointless job, a BS job. So let's watch this video and see what we can learn from this after the anthropologist David Graeber published a book on bullshit jobs, in which he outlined five broad categories of jobs that have become more and more common. The first- So here we go. He's gonna go through this book, which has five jobs that are kind of BS jobs. And I want you to listen carefully and see what type of job do you have and how does it meet one of these categories. Or what he called the flunkies. Think people like doormen, receptionists, chauffeurs, and assistants. These people exist to make other people feel better about themselves and could easily be replaced with some kind of technology. That's if they are really needed at all. Then there are the duct tape. So before we move on to the duct tapers, so many people have jobs that are flunkies, right? And what do we mean by flunkies? Flunkies is someone who has a job where they're just kind of, as he says, looking to help people feel better about themselves. There'll be hotel porters, receptionists, secretaries, administrative assistants, door, door assistants, store greeters, things like that. So all these type of like pointless jobs where you could have AI replace it, automation replace it, but just for the sake of making other people feel good, they kind of exist. I also think in the corporate environment, I myself, just to, if you're new to the channel, don't know who I am. I've worked at some of these top investment banks and I've seen these type of flunky roles. I try to be respectful of people. I'm not going to be disrespectful to a doorman or assistant or things like this. But a lot of these things can be replaced with technology. So some people might, and I'll, I'll mention for myself too, I will come into a category and I'll mention what type of job I had and how it fits one of these five categories. So I'm not picking on anyone. So let's look through next the duct tapers. What type of people are they? What type of jobs do they have? Tapers. These are the people who work to alleviate problems that could very easily be fixed permanently. Think someone like an inventory manager that just so happens to have the system permissions to update stock levels in a warehouse, where that could have been done automatically or at the very least shared amongst floor staff. In his book, Graeber talks of a duct taper whose entire job was fixing the mistakes made by an apparently brilliant statistician. In reality, this star employee was actually hopeless and the duct taper had to fight with bureaucracy to get his mistakes fixed before they could do any damage. This example shows that the solution to the problem is not always getting rid of the person in the bullshit job because the duct taper themselves was probably contributing some value but would be able to create value much more effectively had a needless obstacle been removed. So this is another type of job, right? Where we're calling duct tapers, right? These are people who temporarily find a solution to a major problem um, and they find a temporary uh, fix. So it could be a programmer who's a dodgy code when it comes to coding in the tech industry. It could be an air, uh, airline desk staff who keeps pa uh, passengers calm due to lost luggage. It could be someone who runs a project to find a temporary fix to a major issue at a finance firm. So it could be like a cons third party consult consulting, finance consulting type of role. So there are a lot of people like this and what you understand what you understand over time about big companies in finance in tech in any other industry or even the government um, they have these major flaws but they don't want to address the flaw they want a quick fix and then sometimes they hire people who will provide this quick fix which would be a duct taper so I'm sure some of you listening out there might be a duct taper so think that through and then let's listen to the next category and this is the category category where I actually would describe some of my jobs in the finance industry at some of these top companies Let's listen to it carefully here. The army of mindless drones that exist in big companies around the world because they make said companies appear legitimate to other big companies. Think of the people that create internal company newspapers with stories about key executives or whatever it is that's reported on those things. Nobody actually reads them, and that's the point. But if a company didn't have an internal newspaper or a party planning committee or a culture coordinator, then it might look like a small fry company not worth doing business with or working for. Now it's time to get to the real demons of the bull. So in the corporate environment, you have box tickers. Box tickers could be people who work in audit, who work in compliance, who tick the box to make sure the rules are being followed. Um, people who do various administrative tasks. They manage maybe internal uh, company communications. And you can say to a certain extent, these things are relevant. You need an audit team or a compliance team to check things. Uh, you need an element of um, control management, risk management. And I agree with that, that's genuine. But a lot of those jobs come down to, like a large proportion of it is like doing some 
routine tasks that could be automated, done by AI, things like that. Things that just make the company have a good reputation. So if you do all these checks internally, then you can get a third party to review it and say, oh, you're a bank with you know, good credit score based on these numbers in the balance sheet, good control levels, good financial control and risk management. All these things can be quite easily manufactured through having enough bureaucracy internally, the box tickers as they were. So let's listen to the next example. Bullshit job world. The goons. Goons are an affectionate name to a class of jobs that actually has a negative impact on society, but make themselves necessary by simply existing. The classic example of this is in-house corporate lawyers. They don't really produce anything, but if you don't have them, then it will end up costing you more to hire external counsel to fight off lawsuits from companies that do have internal corporate lawyers. Perhaps the best example of this are patent trolls, which are basically companies that will buy up other companies with lots of generic patents, and then try to sue other companies in the hope that they will just agree to settle out in court. Even the largest companies in the world are guilty of perpetuating this negative sum game. Apple famously sued Samsung for a patent over a rectangular phone with rounded corner. So what are the goons? Now the goons are the next example that we've just covered here, right? These are people who act to kind of harm and manipulate and take advantage of situations for lawyers. There could be lobbyists that try to influence governments, corporate lawyers, um, people who are doing certain manipulative marketing, public relation agents, all these type of goons as, a, as an ex word that he uses is to kind of manipulate public perception of the company or take advantage of other companies in very manipulative ways as we can see with apple and and samsung having these type of issues any type of lawyer that's out there for a money grab to get compensation to sue other companies to be the in intermediary between different people these are the uh, and sue them kind of un unfairly these are the type of goons you might have a debatedly, uh, depending on the circumstances, you could say a divorce lawyer, a lawyer who works on divorces, maybe a goon who's trying to take advantage of the man uh, and take his money and give it to the woman in the case of child support and alimony and things like that. So there's different type of goons you could think of, right? They're just basically people who take advantage of, of situations. Let's move on to the last category and then we'll talk through these in a bit more detail. The people assigned to watch over and manage people that really don't need to be watched over or managed. Effective management does exist, especially when it's coordinating a team with a wide set of skills. But someone like a sales manager who lords over a team of people with exactly the same job title is a little bit different. At best, they are going to be an overpaid cheerleader encouraging people to work harder in roles that may themselves be bullshit. At worst, they will be distractions desperate to justify their existence by calling meetings and creating strategic mission statements that achieve nothing but pulling people away from a job where they do actually have a chance of doing something meaningful. These roles are not singular per So that's the fifth category. And what do we mean by the fifth category here is taskmasters. Now taskmaster is someone who creates extra work. They're like middle management, project managers, things like that. Leadership professionals, any type of middle management role that kind of are in between the senior management and the junior staff who actually get the work done. They can be considered quite pointless. Sometimes I do think they have a value there to add when it comes to project management. Senior people don't only be managing projects. They need an intermediary mid-level manager to manage projects so that's important so i'm sure each of us can be honest here and look at our job and we fit into one of these five categories right so if we look here in a bit of detail it's described in a bit more detail here so you could be a flunky someone who just does work to make other people feel good like a receptionist you can be a goon like a corporate lawyer you can be a duct taper who would temporarily fix problems you can be a box ticker who's like a compliance officer or audit in in a sense and then uh, taskmasters who could be like middle management, project managers, a bit like that, right? So I'm sure if you go through those five, each of you can think of people who fit into those. So think that through. Um, I myself have worked at some of these major companies like Goldman's, Morgan Stanley and so on. So I have some experience of the type of personalities there and dynamics there. Not saying this is directly correlating to that, but just giving an explanation to my background. As in terms of helping you navigate this type of weird corporate environment, um, given my 10 years experience in the industry, I offer um, some career advice sessions. There's a link in the description if you're interested. And there are two recommended videos on your screen right now. And I'll see you next time.